Hello everyone, welcome to this video on descriptive analysis using Excel. Uh, so in this video, I want to walk through some basic formulas that you require to complete your analytics assignment. And again, people who are new to Excel, this will kind of build your basis uh, in order to learn some of the advanced functionality. So first thing first, I want you to check out if you go to data you click on data here then on the right hand side under the data tab somewhere here you should see the data analysis tool pack at the moment we don't have that data analysis tool pack here so i'm expecting in most of the cases on your excel you will not have this enabled so very first thing you need to do is let's enable the data analysis tool pack so go to file on the left hand side and here's options so click on options and here's the add-ins so second last option and this is a new pop-up window so add-ins and in add-ins you have this option which says manage so under manage under this drop down you have different things so don't worry about those just select the axle add-ins which should be selected by default but in case it's not selected just select axle add-ins click on go and in Go, we have here analysis tool pack, very first uh, add-in. So let's check it. Press OK once this is checked. And just wait for a while and now you can see the data analysis is added under the data tab. So make sure you do this thing first, right? So that you're good to go uh, with the available functionality under data analysis tool pack. Okay, so the next thing is applying the descriptive uh, analysis or the des descriptive analytics to this data set. The very first question is, what do we have here in this Excel file? So even in the real life, whenever you do any assignments, that should be the very first question you should ask yourself. What is given in this data set? and what we want to achieve out of it, right? If you know those two things, you can answer all the questions, you can apply right formulas, but don't jump into applying some of the formulas and trying to figure out what is happening here, right? So from the data perspective, we have the sales data set. That's where we have data about different sales being made. First column, we have order ID, which is a unique identifier, which is identifying what is part of each order, right? Then we have order date, ship date, pretty straightforward ship mode, which could be first class, second class, standard class, right? Then we have customer reference, customer ID, customer segment. So either we are supplying to the consumers, home office, what kind of customer is it? Or is this a corporate, right? All the customers are in US, United States. So what state they belong to, what region, like Central, East, West, South. What product we are selling to these customers. So there's a unique product identifier. Then category of product, then further subcategory. For example, this office supplies has number of categories. So such as paper, labels, storage, storage bins perhaps binders right and so on right so each of these category has a subcategory then you're given with the sales as dollar value quantity that was sold any discount that was given to the customer and finally the profit so what we did here in order to simplify uh, this entire data set we segregated the data into the different categories because this particular organization is supplying uh, four different categories of the products, which are paper, furniture, office supplies, and technology, right? So at this point, if you ask that why we have these separated, uh, because part of first workshop is to apply some of the descriptive analytics functions. In part two of workshop, we'll come to the pivot tables then it will make more sense why we are doing all this. And also sometimes students ask, how did you separate all this data? How did we separate the furniture, paper, and so on? So in sales data sets, what you can do is, the simplest way to do that is, just select, uh, select let's say the cell A1, go on sort and filter, just apply filters here. So what I did here, I after applying filters, I selected, uh, one category at a time. So let's say the furniture category. So after selecting furniture category, then I copied all this data and pasted it in furniture, right? So that's one way to do it. But as I said, in next workshop, we'll explore how to use pivot tables with these large data sets, right? So we'll come to that. So for the descriptive analytics part, here are the formulas we want to work through. So again, there are two approaches to apply these formulas. One, that you can type these formulas 
like that given here, right? Like equals average, then select the cells on which you want to apply the average. Otherwise, we're going to use the data analysis tool pack. So that's why we enabled the data analysis tool pack earlier. So let's look into the data analysis tool pack, very first thing. Uh, so I'm going to come back to the Excel. So we are on the paper uh, Excel sheet. In order to apply data analysis tool pack, I'm going to go to data on the top ribbon, which is here, right? Then once we're on data, I'm going to go to data analysis, and here's the descriptive statistics. So click on left click descriptive statistics, press OK. It's going to ask you the input range. So input range are the cells on which we want to apply the descriptive statistics. So let's say we want to work with this paper category products, that's the sheet we are on. I want to apply descriptive stats on the quantities. So I'm going to select all the quantity values, right? So which means either left click on the first cell, hold the left click and just simply uh, drag it to the last cell where you have all the data, right? So I have my data from N1 to N183, right? All my data is grouped. In this case, our data is in a column. We don't have data which we are selecting in rows, right? So most of the cases, your data will be grouped by columns. Then we have a label in the first row. So once you check this, what we are telling Excel that don't use this particular cell N1 as part of analysis because this is a quantity as a text value or as a label, right? The next question is where we want to display our output, right? So again, there's no restriction. You can do anything with that, but I usually select uh, the, the new worksheet, right? So what will happen with a new worksheet, the Excel is going to do all the analysis and going to add a new worksheet to the entire document, right? Uh, but again, that's your choice. You can experiment with this a little bit. We want to create a summary stats. I will not touch upon the confidence level and so on, but in case anybody is interested, so please feel free to do so, but we're going to produce summary stats from here. That's what we want. Let's press OK. So once we have pressed OK, so there's a new sheet being added, it's called sheet one. So in order to follow uh, it's properly, I'm going to call it paper descriptive stats. So I have re renamed this sheet here. That's a very good practice. I will highly recommend to kind of opting for this kind of practice where you're providing proper names uh, to the sheets or to the data set. That will make your life a lot e easier when you're kind of navigating through different sheets, right? Okay, so what we have here, so we have the mean, the average being calculated, standard error, median, more standard deviation. So we have everything, or all the formulas being applied by the descriptive stats when we use this, this um, data analysis tool pack. Alternatively, what you need to do, you need to go one by one. You need to apply, let's say, sum of all the values. So if you're going, apply, going to apply these formulas one by one, so I need to do, equals sum and select all these values from top to bottom, right? From row number N2 to N183, right? But it's going to produce same result. I have sum 660. Let's go to the descriptive stats. We have sum here 660. For me, either way is fine, but I will recommend to get familiar with the descriptive stats or under the data analysis tool pack. It does everything on one click. The other beauty of this is, as we only selected one cell at the moment, let's go back to papers. And from paper, what we're going to do, let's say this time, I want to have the descriptive statistics being applied on sales, quantity, discount, profit. So let's clear the input range. Now I want to select from M1 to T183. So because these are the four columns which contains all the numbers. And my requirement is to find out, let's say, some of all the sales, the total quantities being sold, the total discount we provided, and the total profit. And at the same time, I want to look into some of the other statistical summary, like let's say, what was the average sale? What was the average quantity? Now you can apply these formulas one by one, right? And that's going to be very time consuming. So we selected from M1 to P183. Our data is in columns. 
and we have labels in the first row again we want to add a new worksheet and summary stats so we already have that everything selected so let's press ok so there's a new sheet added it's called sheet 2 which is here again so that we can follow up this easily so i'm going to call it paper all descriptive stats so that we have everything here right so let's expand these a little bit so i have everything related to the sales here sales column so I'm going to give it a different color. I have everything related to the quantity column. So here we go, discount. And finally, I have sum, sorry, sorry, profit, right? So again, this has saved me a lot of time instead of applying every formula one by one, right? That kind of concludes our topic on descriptive statistics. So now as you have access to this video, you can work through this at your own pace. And for during the classroom, uh, we will first go through some of the theory part on the descriptive stats, so that you're aware of why we are using this descriptive statistics. And then we're going to use our class time as a workshop. So which means if you have any questions, you can do that. You can work through the participation activity and we'll take it from that. Great. Thank you, everyone. I will see you uh, in the class.